This program is brought to you by CBUS, making hard work pay off. Don't worry, it's Wattle. Master Builders Insurance Brokers, your industry specialists. Oh, what a feeling. Chat to Chatswood Toyota. Standards Australia, imagine a world without standards. And Florence Magazine, constructing a new perspective. What you're about to witness is some of the most spectacular homes that have been produced in this country in the last year. So get comfy, grab the popcorn. Well, thank you. And prepare to be dazzled. First we thought of it as a beach house, now we just want to live here all the time. I would do another house in a heartbeat, which is quite surprising. You have incorporated a keg room and a beer tap. Great idea, though. And there's a lot of marble. A few slabs here and there. <laughs> All these master builder homes are vying for the coveted 2022 awards. Discover their secrets, the challenges and the jaw-dropping results. Because it's one thing to design these homes, it's another thing to bring them to life. And today, Liv takes us shopping in some of this year's top display homes. It is time to try before you buy. We meet last year's Young Builder of the Year, visit a retro masterpiece. The design was taken from the old 70s style apartment blocks around Marrickville. But first, what happens when you combine an old bakery and an old corner store? Well, you're about to find out. This inner western suburb of Newtown is an eclectic mix of old and new. Its streets are filled with vibrant new works of art. But the walls they're painted on belong to turn-of-the-century buildings. Keeping in the family are a brother and sister duo, Joey and Alice Pamant. They believe in a personal approach to their building projects and providing their clients with an unforgettable building experience, which is exactly what they gave their latest client, the owner of an astonishing oasis in the inner city Sydney suburb of Newtown, called The Bakery. Oh, Tim, how are you, mate? Hello. Good to see you. Hello, how are you? Really good. good you. What a place. Let's close it up. <laughs> oh, look yeah. at this. This is mad. Spectacular, isn't it? Like me just leading the way. <laughs> Love it. That's it. Come in, mate. Make yourself a home. The bakery was originally two dwellings, a bakery and an old corner store, and they were combined into one dwelling in the early 20th century. The new owners wanted to bring it back to its original glory, undertaking a full restoration, renovation and reconfiguration. This was all achieved in under nine months. You must have a fantastic relationship with the client. So I actually helped the, um, the client purchase the property. So we went around a few areas, Alexandra, Mascot, and then as soon as we walked in here, the property was for sale, and we walked around and we thought, oh, wow, this has to be, this, this, is, it. this is it for sure. You know, it has everything that you want in a warehouse um, property. And then because it was such a quick process from signing the papers, getting the contract, putting the offer in. It was slightly more design and construct than here's a, here's a documentation run with it. The designer was also doing her elevations and her sketches, but the minute the um, owner got the keys, we were here with truckloads of guys ready to get started. It was on. It was on. Yeah, it was on straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How difficult was it to deal with some of the heritage issues with this, with this build? Yeah, no one wanted to be engaged on the project because of the complexity of it. So we actually went to the Inner West Council, directly to the council, and spoke to them and explained the situation, and they jumped straight on board and they helped mm. us get the certification for the building, and they actually helped us with the heritage-listed elements of the, of the facade. Mm. Um, so it was really, it was actually a lot easier stage than I thought it would be. The materials inside this warehouse are irreplaceable, like these massive Oregon supports and Joey and Alice made sure nothing went to waste. We reused a lot of the bricks on site, we reused all the timber on site, we, we kept reusing all the elements that we could of, of you know, that was here already. Mm. What was here? What did, you, what did you encounter when you came in on that day with the... With the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was some... I think, like, the, the roof truss, the flooring structure, 
It's very typical of an early 1900s warehouse utilitarian building and that was such a um, key feature that the client was looking for in her warehouse conversion project. So we just thought we need to reuse the timbers that we're finding, we need to repurpose the bricks that we're using, we're not going to bring in new materials if we don't have to. I came in through an amazing lobby, tell me about that space. Mm. The six metre high ceiling lobby, yeah. It's like a hotel. Oh, it no. is. It's the highest ceilings probably that I've ever built. Like yeah. six metres, every time you put a length of timber up, that's one length, that's another length. When <laughs> yeah. you put it up vertical, between yeah. your studs, you're like, wow, this is amazing, you know? Yeah, yeah. we needed a few scaffolds to go <laughs> up and down there for all the different trades. It's such an unassuming entrance and the opulence that greets you is truly surprising. There's a layers of history are wonderful in this place and you haven't run away from the patina, have you? And you're happy for the cracks to be shown here? There was a lot of um, cracks in the render and cracks in the building, which we did some bit of, a bit of underpinning, some crack stitching, and a lot of the render were in the, for, um, in the courtyard, so we removed all the render there, and then other areas where we left a render on the wall, we re-rendered it because we had to chase, you know, some electrical wires or plumbing and stuff like that in the walls. We actually kind of rendered it, a bit of an artistic look, you know, had the labourer there chipping it off and the plasterers trying to patch it back in and make it <laughs> look more cool, you know, more new town, so. With our subcontractors, it took them so long to get their head around the idea of restoring it to, so it's functional and we maintain it, but make it look a bit rustic. And yeah. I'm like, why are, we, why are we chipping something away when we can just smooth it over? <laughs> why are we making this, this, this brass turn patina? Like, they just, it took them a while, but eventually they got it and they understood the methodology of this project. No detail was too small for this renovation come restoration build. Up next, we continue our journey through this amazing warehouse conversion. Yeah, you can see this beautiful uh, round circular window, Tim, it opens up. Oh, wow. Goes like that, just swings open. See the courtyard. Oh, mate, it's great, I love this. Yeah. <laughs> As well as restoring the old bakery site, there was a lot of reconfiguring needed too, including relocating several of the original staircases. So you moved these staircases, did you? Yeah, so we, we actually reused the staircases on site, the metal stringers from the original um, part of the, it was actually on this side of the house, yeah. we reused the stairs. And then here you've got <laughs> it all exposed. Yeah, this, uh, you can actually see we, we, we chipped this off with the jackhammer to try and make it more of a rustic artistic kind of feel for Newtown to try and get the light switches and the power points behind the wall. Fabulous. So every room has a different theme and this is clearly the B room. B room, you've yeah, got right. it, you've got it mate. It's amazing wallpaper. I know, I know. It's a bit freaky but it's cool. It gives a bit of a buzz. Yeah. Um, I like what you did there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The house is 800 square metres and there are five bedrooms, each with their own bathrooms and very particular styling. Yeah, you can see the um, tiles here, Tim. We've um, laid them in three different elements. We've done the herringbone here, uh, vertical here, and then the crossover here, the different patterns, which is pretty cool. The brass tart, we haven't tried to make sure we've got it in the centre of the tiles, you know. <laughs> you so. did a good job there, but it, it certainly, <laughs> it, it is certainly effective, isn't it, in terms of uh, a, a really beautiful ceramic tile used in, in, in those three different patterns are fabulous. Yeah, so we didn't go, um, you know, too crazy expensive on the tiles, but we tried to lay them in a way that was um, you know, brought out the feature of the of the handmade um, tile, you know, and um, yeah, it's the greens. The greens just amazing for, for for a man shower, you know. It's very much a man shower. <laughs> <laughs> and that very masculine bathroom is matched by another that is equally distinct. Well, this is definitely a more feminine bathroom. Little bath here, and then of course, this is great. This vanity. 
It's got a real um, retro charm to it, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the undermount sinks and the... We actually um, use render on the walls here, so it gives it more of a rustic feel, you know, so you can really get the warehouse texture rolls into all the brass. More brass and these circular mirrors and... These, of course, do real diamonds, I imagine. Real diamonds, that's it, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are still uh, hand-painted. The same thing was last downstairs, yeah. Yeah, all hand-painted. So um, you can actually, you know, in the white, you can still see the brush strokes yeah. really amazing, so... That, that's actually one of the things I love the most, this... The hand-painting? The hand-painted, yeah. Yeah. It's a really great space. Another defining feature of the house is the massive steel-framed windows. These had to be commissioned at the very beginning of the build. Measurements had to be 100% accurate, so Joey and Alice worked very closely with the supplier to make sure everything went smoothly. There are so many intricacies and different mechanisms incorporated here. From pull handles to this magnificent sliding door featuring a T-bar system with fitted glass panels. Huge wide expanses here, and there's your famous windows. What how's this system work? Yeah, they're amazing. The steel windows, so it's got a little pulley system on this one. So you press the button there and then open, open it up like that, mate. It's amazing. I have you beautiful. actually see the mechanism here, yeah. So that's so that industrial vibe, yeah. The real industrial vibe, and you get a lot of, lot of sun in winter through, through these windows. So just a real, it's, uh, it's great to have an open, big, wide hallway yeah. where a lot of houses are always small, hall, yeah, small corridors, generous space. I love it. Yeah, you can see this beautiful uh, round circular window, Tim, it opens up. Oh, wow. Goes like that, just swings open. See the courtyard. We actually um, had to, there was no window here before, so we had to brick it in, remove all the bricks, and then um, re-brick it all back in, you know? Oh, mate, it's great. I love this. Yeah. There's um, a real theme in this project of steel framed windows and doors, and that then translated into the pool fence. Um, obviously you need a pull fence to code. Um, and then with the new staircases that we created, we knew there was balustrades there as well. So it was trying to work out how we can bring this real wire cross mesh steel frame element into those areas. And we worked with a local um, steel manufacturer uh, to create the, the, the right, right custom pattern. And we just increased it slightly and made it a heavier steel for the pool and just enough that you couldn't get your toes in to creep up and jump <laughs> over, but that we used a local uh, manufacturer through. It's got a great feel. I mean, it's, it's anchored by this courtyard. To us, it's like a Moroccan Riyadh, where it's yeah. a central courtyard. There's a water feature being the pool. It creates a really tranquil, ambience. Um, so it was really important that we got that right and that, you know, even though it was tricky to bring the trees in, there had to be those trees. It had to be pebbles on the ground. It had to be, you know, tumbled tiles. It had to be, there's so many other features of, the, of that courtyard that was so important to create that really peaceful oasis. And you've got a, got a serious piece of artwork on the back here. Yeah, the mural on the back there we was first, we actually had to restore a lot of um, bricks and a lot of those other cracks, so we had to restore all that side of the facade. And then um, we went back to Inner West Council, worked with them with a graffiti artist to actually repaint their, that side of the building in the park. And yeah, they've just finished it a few months ago and it looks, it looks, looks new town. When you're inside the property, you don't even feel like you're in new town, you feel like you're in a different, Country. And then if you, want, country. if you want to dip out of Newtown, you have a couple of long necks in the park. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, mate. So, yeah, it was always it was a fun it was a fun fun spot to work and fun spot to build and yeah, loved it. Up next, the architect is the client, and he provided a vision that not only embraces nature at every turn, it saves on energy costs as well. Now that's smart thinking. We actually borrow a lot of view out to the neighbouring properties and their treetops, so. The idea was to just have that garden as, a, as an extension of that green space. Marrickville, the best of both worlds. A natural outlook and a great cup of coffee just around the corner. Marrickville is an inner city suburb that started its life as a hub for industry. But over time, the warehouses and factories have given way to more and more urban dwellings. Specialising in renovations, restorations and apartment fit-outs, 
Prestige Habitats enjoy bringing their clients unique visions to life, and this architect's home in Marrickville is no exception. Almost every element for this project was custom made. The most striking part of this build is how much you feel like you're part of nature, yet you're actually in a bustling inner city area. And it's cleverly constructed to bring in a lot of light and use a rooftop garden to help provide insulation. Now, that's clever. This is a great project. It looks simple, but it wasn't, was it? No, oh, it's quite difficult. It looks simple on paper. All these things do, but uh, once we got started here, it was one of those jobs. Just a range of different materials. Mm. They all look easy, but trying to marry stuff up together becomes very, very tricky. Mm. The concrete slab on the floor was like a burnished finish, which was done as one pour at the very beginning of the job. So it was the whole job trying to protect a slab that was finished at the very beginning and trying to wash it every evening and keep it clean and make sure nobody dropped something on it and chipped it, and especially with bricklayers as well. <laughs> they just drop stuff at their feet. So it was constantly a lot of um, supervision trying to mind it. The next biggest part was the suspended slab, it was one of the most difficult parts of the project with the rooftop garden on top. It made it very difficult with having to have such a high level finish on the underside which was quite difficult to form all in one. But you did it. We did it. We had to do it ourselves. The form worker pulled out last minute, so... <laughs> yeah, done so it ourselves. You, stepped in. you did a great job with that. I mean, it is an incredible part of the design and the build, isn't it, to be out there in the main bedroom yes. and then to look out. It's nice. It's, it's quite different. Being a semi-detached house under a flight path, soundproofing was a high priority. The insulation was quite intense in the whole house with a high rating as well for soundproofing and for heat. So um, in that sense, yeah, everything has been over-insulated with double glazed windows everywhere we could. You got a change of materials here, mate. Yeah, this is where the recycled brick meets the um, cork. And what have we got up here? We've got the skylights and the light well. Oh, the light well's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice use of uh, space to let some light down into the kitchen. And then you can be uh, yeah, chatting to everyone down there and going, oh, you've overcooked the eggs yeah, there. Exactly, yeah. So this is not your air conditioning? No, this is a heat pump hot water system. Um, one of the most efficient ways, I think, to heat hot water now. So the condenser up top takes the ambient air temperature and brings the water up to maybe 20, 25 degrees. And then the hot water unit brings it up the rest of the way. It's powered by the solar panels. It's all heated during the day. And then you use the hot water, use night. water by night. Yeah, highly recommend it. It's got a lovely retro flair, this house. Tell me about some of the you know, particular items in, in the house that you like. Oh, I suppose the colours. There's like a lot of colour which we don't see anymore in architecture. Colour is usually brought in in a lot of the modern houses as yeah. furniture pieces. Yeah. Whereas here, the colour is fixed furniture. And you got the metal balustrade. Yeah, the metal balustrades. The architect, again, and his wife really liked the old 70s style from some of the apartment blocks around Marrickville and Newtown. So it's kind of the design was taken from that. The tiles have been reused. Where did they yeah, come the from? tiles came from an old apartment block in Marrickville as well. They were picked up secondhand, so they formed the splashbacks in the kitchen and laundry. How was the tile with those? Oh, uh, not so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, they were falling off their mesh backing and stuff, yeah. so it was a little bit tricky. Some of them we had to just piece together, yeah. but uh, it got there in the end. They're quite unique. You can't buy stuff like that anymore. The other big challenge is just recycled brick. The stairs is quite a difficult one. We got recycled brick treads and risers for the first five steps, and then it transitions to a cork stairs the rest of the way up. But like the brick layers don't work to that kind of tolerance. Yeah. So the cork's amazing. The cork is lovely on the feet. I know it's phased out, but it's making a comeback again. It's a very livable house, isn't it? Yes, it is. It was just so different than what we normally do. Um, I was wondering how it would end up, but now that we're here, sitting here, it's like one of these spaces you could really enjoy living in. Do you have a favourite room? I suppose where we're sitting now, when you stand in the backyard and the back doors are open and you look back into this space, yeah, I, I really like the whole living arrangement. Mm. It's not a huge house, Bunny. No, it's not, but it just with the doors open mm. and that free flow of space out to the back of the garden. Martin had put a lot of time into his garden before we started, so 
he was lucky to have some mature trees still in the yeah. backyard when we were finished, so it became a very mature garden very fast once we were done. This house also has great ways of bringing the outside in, with cleverly placed windows showing the vegetation that grows beside the house. There's also an abundance of light through the use of light wells and some very unusual internal windows. So the internal windows were another feature you don't see that much in houses. Kind of brought its own challenges with waterproofing. There's a lot of alignment with the bathroom windows upstairs for tile thicknesses, jip rock on the outside, very much alignment based. You're so hands on with that stuff, I love it. Yeah. It's all part of the job though, isn't it? I suppose, I suppose so. It's all part of the challenge. Um, what did I say? If it was easy, everyone would do it, so it's like something different. Up next, we meet the owners and architects of this fabulous home. There's a light in the front that I bought in Berlin 10 years ago that I just knew needed to go somewhere. And there's an architect designed cubby house. You got your builder to do that as well. I'm in Marrickville talking to Shane from Prestige Habitats, the builder of this wonderfully retro home. So Shane, what part of Scotland are you from? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great yeah, start. Yeah, 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 that's a good great one. start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least you didn't say England. <laughs> no, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, mate, did you always want to be a carpenter and builder? Um, I suppose look, my grandfather was a carpenter. Yeah. I had an interest in carpentry when I was like early teens. Does that passion still stay with you to, to, to craft and it yeah, does. As, you, as your business it does. expands? I look at things and just go, want to do that myself, um, which I still do a lot of the time, which in this project we did. I would suggest that as clients would like to, like to see that, though, wouldn't they? Yes, they do. Um, a lot of the clients do like that the builder is involved and not just a management guy that uses all subcontractors. Plus, it's nice at the end of the job to be able to stand back and know that you've had a good bit of your own skill has gone into building it, um, rather than relying on everyone else. What was it like having a, the client and the architect as one? Uh, I quite enjoyed it because he's so um, in tune with the industry. We had major supply shortages with COVID right in the centre of the job. I mean, he was very understanding because his own projects that were going ahead were the very same, but one of the best clients I've really had done a job for. Brilliant. The feeling appears to be mutual, as we found out, sitting down with the architect and owner, Martin, and his partner, Jess. How does it feel to live here after the renovations? Does it feel like the same house? Parts of it yeah. do. So, yeah, to be in this newer part of the house, it's amazing. Yeah, and just the connection with the backyard's changed a lot. Like, just having the kitchen be able to see right out, whereas previously we had a really tiny laundry in a kitchen, which is blocking off the kitchen from the living space in the backyard. So, opening that out's made a big difference. Jess, how did you come into play? You know, how, how hard is it to push your architect to the side to get what you want? How does that work together? Uh, <laughs> um, it was fine. It was surprisingly easy and not stressful. Uh, we have very similar tastes and we had things that we kept for years. Um, like there's a light in the front that I bought in Berlin, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago that I just knew needed to go somewhere. So we were pretty much always on the same page. As an architect, are you a good client? <laughs> um, I was I was actually pretty surprised. It all came together really quite yeah. easily. There's a lot of details here which are not standard details. You couldn't always capture it well in a drawing, and so there was a lot of discussion to to get to that point. Shane loves doing the work and getting involved in lots of different aspects of it. So being proud of the end product and and trying to you know get the best result from a building and a design point of view. Um, that's made a big difference. I mean, your garden's wonderful and you've got this incredible rooftop garden. How important was that for you? And it's probably the most complex part of the whole house, really. We actually borrow a lot of view out to the neighbouring properties and their treetops, so the idea was to just have that garden as, a, as an extension of that green space up the top. And he so nailed it. He did, yeah. No, um, no leaks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You can feel there's a lot of love in this house. All those surprising little details that delight you around every corner. Even down to a beautifully constructed elliptical light well that Shane handcrafted for the bathroom. 
This house is testimony to the pride Shane takes in his work, right down to the kids' cubby house that he built on site. You got your builder to do that as well. Yeah, yeah, that was a... Architect um, design cubby house. Yeah, custom, custom <laughs> cubby house, so, yeah, no, it's good. Hopefully the cubby house will get a bit more use um, when it stops raining and when the kids <laughs> get a bit older. One of the most coveted awards every year is the Master Builders Young Builder of the Year Award. And I'm about to meet last year's winner, Andrew Payton. So the Young Builder of the Year for 2021 goes to Andrew Payton from AJP Constructions. Congratulations, Andrew. Andrew, tell me, how long have you been in the association for? I joined when I, when I first started my company in 2011. I pretty much handed the master builders on a, a daily basis. Invaluable, actually, having the support of the master builders, be able to bounce ideas off them and reassure me of I was doing the right thing. So you, you won the Young Builder of the Year. What's that meant to you? Uh, it was huge. It was, it was one goal that we had that we were sort of striving towards for a long time. So to get that and tick that off was, was a huge achievement. Andrew, your niche is sustainability when it comes to building. Tell me about that. It wasn't something that we started out to be. Um, we were mainly architecturally driven builders and it's something that sort of become more um, front and centre and, and important to us over time. Whether or not it's from having a child and, and wanting to leave a, a better world than what we're in at the moment. Uh, and we're finding um, using sus local sustainable products like we're surrounded with here, the, the CLT works really well as far as cost efficiency, buildability, um, and you're using a, a renewable product as well, as opposed to a lot of other products out on the market. Sandra, this is what your walls are made of. Exactly, yeah, and, and the floor and the roof as well. So CLT, that stands for cross-laminated timber. They use waste products or, or second and third grade timber, and it's glued together to form a structurally sound and superior wall. And what do you like about it in terms of, you know, using it on site? The main reason we got um, drawn to using CLT is it just goes together really quickly. So you're eliminating a lot of inefficiencies that you normally see on site by just bringing things in, screwing them together, and getting a really straight, true end result. So what are some of the benefits of being a member of the Master Builders Association? Keeping you up to date is, is fantastic. And especially with COVID, it's something that we've never been through before. And it was changing day by day, week to week. And the Master Builders keeping us up to date on everything that we needed to do and comply was, uh, was fantastic. And it was something that we couldn't have done or got through without the Master Builders' help, so yeah. The Master Builders Association prides itself on looking after its members. And another way they do that is by providing insurance advice. So I came to the headquarters to find out exactly what they provided for. Insurance is one of the most important safeguards when it comes to building your dream home, both for the builder and the homeowner. To tell us about this side of the business is Deli Omasaw from Master Builders Insurance Brokers. How do you fit in with Master Builders? So Master Builders Insurance Brokers are a national insurance brokerage that specialise in the construction industry. Uh, Master Builders Association New South Wales has a share in, in our business and we service the construction industry. One of the products you have is home warranty insurance. Why is that so important? It's there to protect the homeowner in the event that the builder goes into insolvency, passes away, disappears, or in New South Wales, if the builder has their licence suspended due to non-compliance with a money order made by the court. In the event that happens, it would then cover for the building to be complete or for defects to be um, rectified. Sounds like really important insurance to have. When should it be implemented? From the date you sign the contract. As a general rule of thumb, when, when money is exchanged uh, hands between the consumer and the builder, home warranty needs to be in place by, by that point. What other insurances are there that are beneficial for both the builder and the homeowner? So the other insurance products that we've got um, is contract works and public liability insurance. The homeowner's got an interest in making sure that that's in place. Um, their interest lies from making sure that they're comfortable, that if there was a fire um, on site, that the builder's able to then go back and finish the job. Have you got any advice for homeowners who are about to embark on building? Uh, the main one is to make sure that there's insurance in place and they can do so by uh, requesting you know, certificates of currencies from, from builders to ensure that they've got the, the relevant home warranties for each particular state and public and products liability, contract works and liability, making sure that the builder's got that. Is there an insurance for painting your house a stupid colour? No. Dang. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Up next, it is time to try before you buy. What do the judges look for in an award-winning display home? We're about to find out. One of the most fiercely contested categories for the master builders each year is the Display Home of the Year Award. Media room, butler's pantry, alfresco living, and walk-in wardrobes. Let's go shopping. Display Homes offer an incredible resource when you're wanting to build. You can literally step through your future home. And you can decide on what features best fit your location and your lifestyle, both now and in the future. Let's take a look at some of this year's contenders. What are the judges looking for in an award-winning display home? Well, first, it's their appearance. Does the home have a sense of timelessness? You don't want it to be so on trend that it'll be dated before it's even built. The Claremont 32 home by Contemporary Homes in Orange has opted for a lot of natural finishes, with details in stone and in wood. Meanwhile, Cape Levique by Raymond Vincent Homes is a modern barn-style home with recycled bricks and recycled hardwood posts and vertical groove cladding. While inside, vaulted ceilings and full-width sliding doors continue the rural and rustic theme. Both have an ecocentric sensibility that won't be going out of fashion anytime soon. Another consideration are the house's orientation. How will they work in the location you want to live? The Cape Levique has spectacular windows, giving you views from all parts of the house. Its lofty ceilings and airy rooms gives it good ventilation, great for a rural location. Meanwhile, the Clermont 32 is built to cater for Orange's harsh winters. Ample windows facing north to capture available sun, double glazing on the windows, whilst in the West Plantation, shutters not only provide aesthetic appeal, but offer protection from the scorching western sun. Next up, livability. Are you planning a family? Are your kids hitting school? Or are you wanting to future-proof for when they leave the nest? An award-winning display home should include comfortable family spaces and useful inclusions. The main focal point of the Franklin 27 from Worthington Homes is its open-plan kitchen living room area. With a walk-in butler's pantry tucked behind the main kitchen. It looks out over an alfresco area and backyard, so kids can be supervised while playing, and it makes for easy entertaining for family and friends. It also features generous walk-in robes and a large laundry. And here in the Glenlee 41 by Kerman Homes, there are various common areas and breakout spaces perfect for an older, active family, including a media room, large open-plan study area, a private patio, and balcony, and a large open-plan living area that opens up to an alfresco dining space. The final criteria each display home must meet is value for money. And here to talk to me about the quality of display homes is Phil from Homeworld in Box Hill. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for having me. Phil, when I drove in, it truly is like entering its own little world. There are a lot of homes here. How many to be exact? There's 105 homes on display here, Liv, representing about 36 different building companies, showing duplexes, granny flats, studios, uh, four bedroom homes to large mansions. Wow. It must be so nice to watch families or, or couples or whoever it might be come in here and, and really see what their future home might look and feel like. Uh, by all means, and they come back several times. How comfortable are people getting inside the house? <laughs> people do start living in them or imagining themselves living in it. And that is what you want. That's the experience you want them to come here and gain more than just, this is the cost and where's your block of land. We want to experience what they're going to be living in. It's also for those people who might not know where to start. I would come here purely for inspiration. And is that OK? We invite them to come and look at the decorating. We know that that happens. A large percentage of people coming through here. We were sitting in a cafe one day and uh, an older couple were there and they're saying, look, um, we're not really going to build a house. We're just looking for decorating ideas for our kitchen. 
but my niece wants to build a house and I'm going to refer, tell her to have a look at that one over there because she had the brochure showing how much it was and it represented good value for money for them. If I really loved a design of one home but I also loved a few features from another one, is that possible to merge them or...? I think within the same companies it is. People can come here, ask questions of the salespeople. Can we do this size house on that size block? It is a matter of then choosing that builder and having the confidence in that builder. The reputation of the builders here is uh, pretty well defined. And what are some of the, the trends that you're starting to see come through? En suites were a big deal in the early, late 70s, early 80s. An en suite was basically a shower, a toilet and a basin. And in about the mid 90s, they did a lot of research and found that the parents wanted the big bathroom. So if you go through a lot of the homes now, you'll find that the ensuite is actually bigger than the main bathroom. Kids make the mess in the bathroom. So true. And the parents like to have the glamour of a big ensuite with the spa, and it's, a, it's an interesting change. The other one, uh, off the laundry area, there's a lot of mud rooms where people come in and they can take their shoes off because you want to keep your new home as nice as it can be, obviously. But the real change that I think is in the two-storey designs where there's always a bedroom downstairs and this allows for multi-generational living. We've gone back to having the grandparents perhaps in the bedroom downstairs, which is really changing the face of Australia. And kitchens have become the focal part of the house and they throw all the mess into the butler's pantry so it looks neat and tight. I've got to get myself a butler's pantry ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are absolutely spectacular and I'm very keen to go and have a proper look around and uh, piece together my perfect future home. <laughs> Certainly sure what you'll find at, at home. If you're planning a new home, display homes are the perfect place to start. Filled with ideas for joinery, tiling, bench tops, bathrooms and flooring, you have everything you need at your fingertips. And as for the awards, once they have taken into account appearance, orientation, livability and value for money, only then do we have a winner. Up next, I visit a family home with the ultimate entertaining backyard. And a few personal details. And then you got your Chanel. And you got the Chanel. This program is brought to you by Seabus, making hard work pay off. Don't worry, it's Wattle. Master Builders Insurance Brokers, your industry specialists. Oh, what a feeling. Chat to Chatswood Toyota. Standards Australia, imagine a world without standards. And Florence Magazine, constructing a new perspective. Great view, but wait, there's more. Our next property lies nestled in the leafy suburb of Northbridge. Blocks still afford magnificent city views. Having one company handle both the design and build of your dream home is what Chateau Architects and Builders is all about. A family business for over 50 years, they look after everything from design to building to landscaping to optimise your budget and your lifestyle. Their Northbridge home was built for a family of five who had big ideas of what their forever home was going to include. This site has uninterrupted views to the bridge and city that the clients wanted to capitalise on. And the backyard needed to accommodate a double-sized tennis court, pavilion, pool and spa. Alex, thanks for having us in the house. Tell me a little bit about what the owners wanted from this building. Yeah, the owners had lived here for more than five years. Um, it was originally two separate properties that had been amalgamated and they wanted to take advantage of the whole, uh, the whole property. In the distance there are views down to Northbridge and views down into the valley so they wanted to make sure they took that into consideration. Everything's on the back here, it's the views are at the back, the, the tennis court, the swimming pool, the entertaining, so the back really is the standout. And what sort of issues did you have to deal with in terms of the site? The main issue here is that the site is falling dramatically away from the street. There was only limited space to actually be able to get in and build. 
We had to make sure we had to build everything from the back out. And once the slab went down, we had to just build the house. Shadow architects and builders build custom homes for their clients and manage the process from initial concepts to final handoff. We're a custom build company. We've never built the same house twice. A lot of times, the owner will sit down with an architect, design a home, get it approved, get all the paperwork, go to tender and find out that the home is 50, 60, 70 per cent over budget. So the advantage with Chateau is that our architects can call on all areas in the construction field. Mm. And at every stage we can monitor the budget and ultimately the owner is always in the driving seat to say, yes, I'm happy to spend that money or no, I'm not. What's some of the standout features of the home? Up in the bathroom, we've got a lot of glass mosaic tiles. The, the bath is probably the feature. It's right in front of the feature window. The only way we could actually get the bath up to the site was actually crane it in. So we crane it up onto the balcony upstairs. We opened the uh, packaging and the and the uh, the crates, and we realised that it was chipped. Oh, God. So we had to put the bath back in the back of the truck and send it <laughs> off back to the supplier. We made sure we checked it before it, <laughs> before it came up the second time. So yeah, we opened the crates, checked yeah. it, and uh, and up it goes. Okay. So it's a, it's a it's amazing feature there. What other difficulties did you have with the site? Well, one of the main briefs from our clients was manage moisture, manage water. Now, I think the original home was 70 or 80 years old, so there was a lot of water that was coming through. It caused quite a bit of uh, water problems, mould uh, in the original home. At various stages, it caused health issues with the, with, the, with the family. A large portion of this home is built below street level. So to further protect this home from its historic mould issues, Chateau Architect and builders designed the house so that none of the walls actually butted up against the soil. They did this by terracing down from the front yard and connecting the house to the street by a bridge, leading to a very iconic looking door feature. Clients again wanting to capture as much sunlight. They also wanted a lot of ventilation. We've ended up with a steel door that has a very unique design. I, know, I think it's a Chanel symbol. It's a Chanel symbol. Chanel of course symbol it is. Or, or, well or, or, a, or a part, part <laughs> thereof. So these are the doors. This is the front door. So it's all deadlocked. Flick the latch. Yeah. Open the door and you've got the ventilation. And then you've got your Chanel. And you've got the Chanel. Love it. The owners of this magnificent property wanted space to entertain as well as providing room for their growing family. With a separate kids' wing, library and wine cellar, all making use of those impressive views. Thank you for having us in your beautiful house. What do you like the most about this house? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, well, I love the light. I love the elegance. I love the glass. I love that we all have plenty of space. You know, so as the family grows, they can all find their own area and probably not hate each other too much. Yeah, will they ever move out of this wonderful home? I hope not. <laughs> Of course not. What was it like to work with Alex and his team? It was surprisingly fun, actually. Oh, that's good. We just had a really seamless experience. Most people would say to us, oh, God, you're building. Like, are you ready for divorce? Or how yeah. bad is it? And how much of a budget? And we were like, oh, no, we're actually having a really lovely time. Is Alex, is he allowed back? Are you going to have him around for a hit of tennis and a swim? We're definitely having a dinner party. I just actually loved all of them and I would happily work with them again. I would do another house in a heartbeat, which is quite surprising, mm. if I could afford one. <laughs> I love it. When I'm coming down the stairs and I get to take it all in and um, I often just take a second and just have this sense of gratitude and just look at it and just, you know, I'm quite surprised by how beautiful it actually is. In our next episode, I visit a house that is like a ship in a bottle. Welcome aboard. Tim visits a very special location. I feel like I'm on the set of a new Bond film. Plus, one builder found an ingenious solution to give the owners the dream home they've always wanted. <coughs> but wait, there's more. A home that oozes luxury on every surface.
This program was produced in conjunction with the Master Builders Association, proudly representing the building industry since 1873.